Grace and peace to you, everybody. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church of Warren, gathered for worship here on Zoom. And uh, we will be recording this and posting it on Facebook later. We're having trouble with our live stream this morning, but I'm so glad you found your way over here. Mary Jo, did the sound sound okay? It does, yes. Great, awesome. <laughs> we'll be praying for our sound today, hoping that it works as well. I'm so glad you're here this morning. Uh, in the chat, if you wanna share where you're worshiping with us from, that would be awesome, or in Facebook on the comments too. I wanna to say happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. We have uh, pictures of the moms from our worship leaders this morning. Uh, there's me and my mom, and Mary Jo and her mom, and uh, Kevin and his mom and dad. So if you would like to post a picture of your mom, you can do so in uh, the comments on our Facebook feed. After worship, we have a coffee hour. You can join us for coffee hour on Zoom right afterwards. If you have not been before, I would encourage you to show up. Let's try to get a big group to coffee hour today so we can catch up with one another and see how we're doing. Um, just join the ID and the password. Every week I send it out on the weekly e-news as well. As always, we have evening prayer um, with me in June, uh, Monday through Thursday on Facebook, every evening at 8 p.m. We love seeing you all there. Wednesday, we have Bible study at 7. Uh, we're still working through the Psalms. We're going to start the book of Deuteronomy, which sounds kind of intimidating. Uh, we'll start that in June, but we will be working through it together, and we'll be learning a lot together, so I hope you can join us for that. This Thursday at 7 p.m., we're going to have a service on Zoom here. Um, I'm calling it Say Hard Stuff to God Together. Uh, we've been walking through the Psalms the last few weeks, and the Psalms are all about saying hard things to God. So this is a time, um, we all are grieving different things in different ways during this time. Um, some of those griefs seem kind of little, like I missed a trip last week. I wasn't able to go to North Carolina. I was supposed to be in North Carolina today. Um, or maybe some bigger things. We've lost people in our lives during this time. Uh, this is a place to say that together. You can come, you don't have to say anything, but we will hopefully create a safe and sacred space for you to feel comfortable to sharing those things that are on your heart. Um, I'd invite you to come and just try it out. We're gonna be doing something new together. On May 23rd, we're gonna have a food drive. This is part of our um, mission that we came up with the other week. Um, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Glenn is going to be in the church parking lot with his truck. And so you can start collecting non-perishable items or cleaning supplies. We'll be taking it to a local food bank. Uh, so it would be great to come out. Um, we, it's also open to whoever wants to come and drop things off. There's a sign uh, on the electronic sign at church. So hopefully people in our community will be aware of this as well. Uh, starting in June, we're going to be doing a new sermon series, A Spiritual Journey Through Scripture and Our National Parks. These are the national parks I'm thinking about uh, sharing with you all throughout those weeks. If you have a story from one of those national parks or some pictures of you in those national parks, if you want to send them to me, that would be great. Um, I think it'll be a fun series and we'll get to see some beautiful parts of our country. Um, when we're not able to travel probably this summer, and uh, we'll be journeying through scripture as well. I learned that May is Mental Health Awareness Month. I know our state just put out a new text number. If you are in need of help, um, you can text RESTORE to 741741. Um, there's also the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline number down there. Uh, reach out to someone if you are in need of help. Julie, yep. I will be putting all of this information on our website too on the COVID response page. That's it awesome. Should be, it should be there probably by tomorrow afternoon. 
Great. Mary Jo is working on a resource page for us as part of our um, mission and outreach to the community as well, a list of all those resources. Friends, let us turn our hearts and minds now to the worship of God. Please join me now in the call to worship. How can we know the way of God? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Let us continue with the prayer of the day. Spirit of life and love, we gather together in different ways this morning, from computer screens, from telephones, from car radios. We, gar we gather reaching out across the wires, waving from a safe distance, to come together in religious community. From living room to front porch to car seat, we gather as we are able, ready to be a service to each other, to the world, ready to build the community of hope and of love as we face this bright morning. We are apart, but we are together, offering our love, our commitment, our hope, and our prayers in service to one another and this world. It is a new way, but an old way. We come together and worship today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of praise is number 394 in the purple hymnal, 394, Christ is made the sure foundation. promises that if we ask, we will receive. Jesus tells us to believe in him so that our hearts will not be troubled. 
We do not need to languish in guilt or regret or shame. We can come in faith, trusting God's grace and mercy, confess our sin, be forgiven and free to live in joy. Let us pray. Almighty God, in raising Jesus from the grave, you shattered the power of sin and death. We confess that we remain captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways that lead to death. We overlook the poor and the hungry and pass by those who mourn. We are deaf to the cries of the oppressed and indifferent to calls for peace. We despise the weak and abuse the earth you made. Forgive us, God of mercy, help us to trust your power to change our lives and make us new, that we may know the joy of life abundant, given in Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. Hear these words. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Friends, believe the good news. Through Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs> of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Friends, I'd invite you to share a sign of peace in the chat or in the comments. And I'd invite the children of the church to come forward. I don't know if I hear my children coming at all. I'm gonna do something a little crazy. I'm gonna escape from this uh, screen share, so. Hold on just a second so you can see me. I'm hoping you can see me. Let's see, here we go. So um, we have been going through the Psalms the last few weeks and the Psalms are prayers to God. And they say things that are truthful, that are in our hearts that we wanna pray. There are lots of different ways that we can pray. I don't know if my kids are going to help me at all. I don't think they are. <laughs> um, but Isaac and Jude and I, Jude, you want to tell them what we've been watching each day? We've been watching something called uh, Faith Finders, right? Yeah, Faith Finders. It's on YouTube and it's from some of my colleagues in ministry. And they put out a video each day, and each day there's a different theme. What, what theme is your favorite? You guys like Magic Thursday and Science Friday? Uh, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's, that's, <laughs> that's everybody who's on there, yeah. Um, so one of the days this past week, they did something really cool. It was called a crossword prayer, and it made me think about the Psalms. So we're going to do a crossword prayer for everyone. All you need, you can do this later. You can watch me while I do it right now. But you just need a piece of paper and something to write with. The adults can do it too. And we're going to write different things we're praying for. So one of the things, the first thing that I wrote is, can you see it? It says, first church. First church. I'm praying for first church. And then I was thinking about, um, I was thinking about today's Mother's Day. So we can pray for all the moms out there. So I wrote the word moms. Do you see how it connects to first church? We're kind of making like a crossword, huh? Moms. Okay. And then I am praying for, let's see. 
I need to find a way to do this. Um, I am yeah, praying yeah. for, do you want to get out? Yeah. Okay. No problem. Um, let's see. I am praying for leaders. Oh boy. I totally messed up on that one. Hang on guys. I should have done this ahead of time. You'll see I messed it up. Leaders. I'm praying for leaders. I'm praying for people who are, I bet yours will look a lot better than mine. I'm praying for people who are sick. So I put people who are sick up there. Um, I am hoping for some sun really soon. I'm hoping for some sun and some warm weather. What about you, Mary Jo? Are you hoping for sun and warm weather? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And one of the things I want to tell God about is that sometimes I get worried about everything that's going on. I get worried that I'm not able to see all of you. And so I wrote worried. And so that's something I can pray for too, because that's something that's true that's inside of me. So I would love to see your crossword prayers. I bet you can make it look a lot nicer than mine. Um, and what are some of the things that you're praying about? So let's pray together. Holy God, we thank you that we can always tell you hard things and things that are going on in your life. Today, we especially pray for First Church, for moms, for leaders. We pray for some sun. We pray for those who are sick. And we pray for our own worries as well. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so now, there we go, nice and smooth. <laughs> Let's pray together. Living God, with joy, we celebrate the presence of your risen word. Enliven our hearts by your Holy Spirit, so that we may proclaim the good news of eternal and abundant life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is John 14, 1 to 14. Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, I can't read what that says. <laughs> Lord, with the Father and we will be satisfied. Oh, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our second reading comes from Psalm 31, verses 1 through 5. Let's see. Listen for God's word. 
In you, O oh Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me. For you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thank be to God. Be to God. So, Sorry, I'm having technical difficulties on, <clears throat> on my end. There we go. So when I am working on, um, or working with text from scripture that I'm planning to preach on, I like to sit with it for a while so it will speak to me. Um, I, it was helpful that last Wednesday at Bible study, we discussed um, Psalm 31 at length. And it was at the end of the Bible study that I clearly heard what Psalm, was Psalm 31 was trying to tell me. It came from the constant barking of my adorable, yet sometimes annoying, lab mitt, Raven. I think we have a picture of her. Yes, that's my beautiful raven dog. It came from her, um, her constant barking, um, and everyone heard it. And of course, I was completely embarrassed by it. We have talked with an animal behaviorist about her barking and about her behavior, and the Behavior is said that Raven is a stress barker. She barks when her life seems to be out of her control, which seems to be most of the time. But I don't entirely agree with this. Being home with her 24 seven these last few weeks, I, I have noticed that she really enjoys barking. She runs from one couch to the other. Her eyes are alert and, she, and she's bright and she's just having a great time barking. However, what I have noticed is that when she is truly stressed, she gets quiet. She sits very close to me and she looks up to me and says, sit, sit, mom, please, I'm scared. I can't always fix the problem, but I can lay my hand on her and let her know that I'm right next to her and I'll protect her. Raven lets down her guard and becomes vulnerable. She's no longer in control. She is no longer pretending that everything is okay when she feels it isn't. Being vulnerable is not easy for a dog to be. It requires trust in her humans. Being vulnerable isn't easy for us humans either. Renee Brown says, and I think we have a quote for her, vulnerability is the core of shame and fear in our struggle for worthiness, but it appears that it is also the birthplace of joy of creativity, of belonging, and of love. So vulnerability comes from love, or love comes from vulnerability. 
when we are stressed, we feel vulnerable. We all have had stressful times. We are, we are in a stressful time. We desperately, I know I do, desperately want to leave our homes, get back to normalcy, but we worry that it will cause the virus to start spreading again. How do we feel love? Well, I read um, from Stephen Cole, who is a pastor emeritus at Flagstaff Christian Fellowship in California. And he wrote on Psalm 31. And he said that Psalm 31 is a remedy for stress. And just as I laid my hand on Raven to calm her, the hand of God can calm us as well. The liturgy has us reading only a portion of Psalm 31. So I would encourage you to take some time to read the entire psalm this week. In Psalm 31, the psalmist, David, is really stressed. He is in fear for his very life. And he calls out to God for help. David is reaching out his hand to grab the hand of God. David in this psalm refers to the concept of the hand of God many times. In the words prayed by Jesus on the cross, which appear in Psalm 31, into your hand I commit my spirit, Many times we, we think of this phrase when we think of the death of Jesus. And we, however, we, we can believe that it is also important to say about the life of us as believers that we can, that our approach will be considered and that trusting in the Lord, God, no matter what, will help us in times of stress. We also can trust in the words of God, I'm sorry, my, my page. that God will always be with us in times of stress. But we have this crazy notion that if we just follow God and obey what God is saying, that all of our difficult times and our trials will be set aside. But we are shown that, that that's not the case, that we Really, I'm having some computer problems. I'm sorry. Okay. Did you lose your manuscript? <laughs> I did, I did. I'm sorry, I can't find it again. It, it's not coming back up. That's okay. You were, you were telling us, Mary Jo, maybe we can just talk it out. You were telling us that um, sometimes we think about God as uh, we ask God for something and God's supposed to give it to us, right? In times exactly. of stress. 
in times of stress, yes. And but it's not about it's um, one of the things that we talked about in Bible study on Wednesday is that God is not our genie in the bottle. God is not something that we can go rub the lamp and have it have our stress taken away. Um, God is something that it, God is our presence when we need that strength. God is that presence when we lose our manuscript during a sermon and need to punt. Um, God is the God is faithful, and God will help us through that time mm -hmm. of trial. And that is what I find with this psalm is that that God is with us through all of our stress. God is with us through through the the times that we need to be delivered. We still have to go through that 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 valley, that that area that is going to be scary. But one of the things that I have read through Brene Brown, who is um, a speaker, and she talks about vulnerability, that when we allow ourselves to become vulnerable, when we allow ourselves to become quiet and still, we can see clearer. We have, we can find our strength. And when we stop the barking, the talking, and we see the things that we need to see, God comes to us and gives us